Face velocity versus containment. There is a major misconception that if the face velocity shown on the hood alarm reads 100 feet per minute, then the hood must be working. But there is no direct correlation between face velocity and containment. Let me repeat that statement. There is no direct correlation between face velocity and containment. Just because the fume hood has 100 feet per minute face velocity does not mean it's working safely. In fact, when doing ASHRAE 110 testing, over half the hoods that failed containment testing had the specified face velocity. While face velocity is a component of containment, it's only one component. How fast the air is going into the hood, which is the face velocity, merely determines how big the rapids and turbulence will be. Raw face velocity is more about turbulence. The direction of the airflow is determined by differential pressure. The stronger the negative pressure at the back of the fume chamber, the more aggressively the air moves into the low pressure parts of the hood, which is mainly the plenum. Again, the plenum is a space created between the baffles and the back wall of the hood. This special hood was constructed with clear baffles so you can see inside the plenum. By using colored smoke, you can see the path the smoke takes to the exhaust duct. Face velocity is a useful number and provides some indication of overall performance. You should only work at a fume hood that has a velocity alarm and the velocity is within the specified range. Here in the US, you will find that hoods were designed to operate between 60 feet per minute and 100 feet per minute. Occasionally we'll find hoods with higher or lower design velocities. While 100 feet per minute has a logical basis, as the face velocity goes higher, particularly over 125 feet per minute, excess turbulence is created, reducing the hood's ability to contain. So more isn't necessarily better and too low, it, you're more likely to have external movements cause loss of containment. Again, the way you know a fume hood is performing at a specified velocity can only be determined with an ASHRAE 110 as used test. It often helps to visualize airflow within the hood. Not everyone has access to a fog machine, so another way to visualize airflow is to pour warm water on dry ice. It is often said that if you can't see a problem, you can't fix it. Fume Hood Certified is starting to post videos on our YouTube channel that will help you visualize some of the issues we are discussing. Today, most labs have VAV or variable air volume controls. Remember, for your hood to function safely, the room has to stay balanced. That means that the room remains slightly negative to the hallway and the amount of supply air at any given time is roughly equal to the amount of air the fume hood is exhausting. So we have both exhaust and supply volumes to manage. Let's say the hood has an experiment running and you have the sash closed. The amount of air the hood is exhausting is low. The room's supply air terminal has closed down to keep the supply air coming in equal to the amount of air the hood's exhausting. Now you open the sash and the exhaust volume suddenly increases. But there's a lag time between when the, control, the room controller recognizes this volume or pressure shift and readjusts the supply to get back to a stable condition. During this per period of lag and instability, a fume hood is more likely to have a loss of containment due to the differential pressure changes. Yet it is highly possible that the face velocity has remained within an acceptable range. Remember what I said, there's no direct correlation between face velocity and containment. Before there were digital alarms, hoods were often equipped with manometers. 
these gauges read differential pressure. But because these readings were always fluctuating with the pressure changes, which was actually a better indication of containment, it was difficult for the user to determine when the hood was performing safely and when it wasn't. The thinking was that a velocity monitor would be a better solution since it could be programmed to alarm when the face velocity was outside the specified range. Yet over the years, I've seen hundreds of people working with hoods that were alarming, and rather than addressing the problem, they would simply mute the alarm. While the face, al face velocity alarm is not perfect, it is better than nothing and should be used as an indication of basic performance between regular hood test and calibrations.